friends, welcome back to another video about creating wearables for Decentraland. I'm KJ from Low Poly Models and today we're going to be making a pair of shoes. I'm super excited to go through this process with you because we've been collaborating with the streetwear brand Son of Adam to create a really cool collection of wearables for Decentraland. We'll be launching these boots and the rest of the collection soon and airdropping some to the community. So keep your eyes peeled for them. Anyways, let's get into it. There are six main steps to making wearables for Decentraland. Importing and setting up a Blender file. Modeling, texturing, weight painting, testing, and submitting. If you're familiar with the process, feel free to skip ahead to the chapters you're interested in reviewing. To get started, go ahead and download the Decentraland base female and base male avatar models. You can find a link to them in the description box below. Avatars in Decentraland work kind of like Lego pieces, so when we change their clothing, we're actually changing part of the body, like the torso, the legs, or the feet. You could think of DCL wearables as puzzle pieces that have certain shapes so they can be combined with other wearables. The parts that fit together and connect wearables go by a few different names. You might know them as loops or stitches. Basically, they are rings of vertices that are in exactly the same place on all wearables. You can find them around the base of the neck, the hips and the ankles. Decentraland avatars have different hip heights, so sometimes we need to make two versions of a wearable. One that fits the female hip shape and one that fits the male hip shape. The rings of vertices around the neck and the ankles are the same on both avatars. So only one wearable version is needed for shoes and headgear and things like that. Now let's open up Blender and import the Decentraland base avatar models that you can find link down below. So in Blender, just go to File, Import, and select Import as GLTF 2.0, in brackets, GLB, GLTF. Next, you might want to add reference images to the scene to help with the modeling process. To add a reference image, press Shift-A and select Image, Reference Image. Then choose an image from your system in the pop-up window and click Import. You can move, rotate, and scale the image so it lines up with the avatars. Let's start modeling by adding a cube to the scene with Shift-A mesh cube and scaling it down to size. Then we'll subdivide it and adjust the shape until it starts to resemble something like a boot. You can use the hotkey G to move parts of the mesh, R to rotate them, and S to scale them. We can also add a mirror modifier, so we're making both shoes at once. This process takes a while, so I'll speed the video up a little bit. This video does assume you have some experience making models in Blender. If you're just getting started with Blender, welcome to the community. Hey. If you want to learn more about the modeling process, you might want to check out my Blender 101 video. I'll link it up on the screen now if I can. If not, it'll be in the description box down below. And you can also find loads of great Blender tutorials online. They cover pretty much anything and everything you can think of. So for the laces, I put together a long cube and an array modifier and a curve modifier, and then just edit the curves path to lace up the boots. I'm also adding some chains to the boots, and I do that by combining a torus with different modifiers an array modifier, a curve modifier, and an object offset with a plane axis empty. Once you're happy with the shape of the shoe, the next step is to make sure the ring of vertices around the ankle is in the same place as on the avatars. As I said before, the loop of vertices on avatars between the legs and the feet is really important. It works as an anchor to hold wearables together. So whatever you decide to create, you need to have this loop of vertices in the exact same place as on the avatars. There are different ways of getting the rings of vertices around the ankles in the right place. You could just move them and use the magnet to snap them into place, or you could separate them from the feet or lower body models and join them to your shoes. 
but these shoots have quite a lot of polygons, so let's do what's known as a retopology, which is a fancy word for remaking the shoe shape with a cleaner and, in our case, less detailed mesh. And we'll start our retopology right from the ring of vertices around the ankle, so we know they're in the right place and it will also help us position the rest of the vertices relative to the ankle. If you want to learn more about retopologies, I'll add a link to the screen or to the description below. You can also find loads of great info online by searching Blender and Retopology. Cool, so once that's done, it's a good idea to check the amount of triangles your model has. For items to be technically approved, they need to be under 1500 triangles, or 500 triangles if they're accessories. Shoes count as regular wearables, so we have 1500 triangles to play with. Now our modeling is done and we can start texturing the boots. We can do this before or after weight painting, but if we do it before, we can take advantage of that mirror modifier and texture both boots at the same time. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Let's take a second to talk about the material limits for wearables in Decentraland. We can use a maximum of three materials, including two textures. A material is anything that shows up at the top of your material properties tab. A texture is a material that has an image plugged into it. You can see those in the shader editor. All image texture sizes for a DCL wearable should be powers of 2, like 256 and 512. The maximum recommended size for an image is 512 by 512 pixels. You can resize images in Photoshop, GIMP, and also in Blender. For our boots, we've created two different textures in Substance Painter, one for the special edition Son of Adam pattern with our brand colors, the soles and the chains, and another one for the fabric texture and logos. That leaves us with one spare material, which we could use to add another effect, like glowing or transparent areas. To use these images as textures for the shoes, let's go ahead and create a new node material and head over to the shading tab. With Shift A, we can add a new node to the setup, choose texture and image texture and plug the color output into the base color input of the principled BSDF node. Now let's create a second one for the other texture. You can change how images are displayed on your model by unwrapping the geometry. In edit mode, press U to unwrap and a series of unwrapping options will appear in a window. Try them out and see which is best for what you have in mind. You can also modify the layout in the UV editor window by scaling, moving, and rotating parts of the mesh. If you want to change the materials on the model, select some faces in edit mode, choose a material, and press assign. Cool, now the texturing is done, so let's start weight painting. Before we start rigging the model to the armature, it's good practice to run through a few things and it can save us a lot of time and headaches afterwards. So let's go ahead and check the model's object data properties in the panel on the right hand side. If there are any vertex groups, we want to go ahead and delete them. And let's also check the model's modifiers in the properties panel. If there are any modifiers, we want to apply or remove them. Next, let's make sure the model isn't parented to anything in the scene. Press Option or Alt P and select Clear Parent and Keep Transformation. Lastly, let's apply all transforms to the model with Control A, apply all transforms. After checking these things, we can go ahead and parent the model to the armature, select the model, then the armature and press Control P and choose a parenting method. I usually go for automatic weights, but you can choose any of the armature deform methods. Now the model will move with the skeleton, sweet. For it to work well in Decentraland, we do need to adjust some of those weights. Remember that ring of vertices around the ankle? It needs to be fully weighted to the lower leg bone with no influence from any other bones. Feel free to adjust other areas though, so the model moves just how you want it to. There are a few different ways to go into weight paint mode, which is where you can adjust the influence of the bones on different parts of the mesh. 
I like to select the armature, then the mesh, and go to the top left hand corner of the screen and choose weight paint from the drop down menu. Then you can press control and click to select individual bones and see their influence on the model. You can use the paintbrush to add or remove weight and the blur tool to soften transitions. You can also move and rotate the bones whilst in weight paint mode to get a better feel for the model's movement. Once you're happy with how the boots move with the avatar skeleton, it's time to test them out in the Decentraland wearable editor. First, let's export the 3D model as a GLB file so Decentraland can read it. Select the model, then the armature, and go to File Export GLTF 2.0 in brackets GLB. This opens up a window with different export options. So under Include, we want to check Selected Objects. Under Transform, we want to check Plus Y Up. Under Geometry, we want to check UVs, Normals and Vertex Colors. And finally, under Animation, we want to check Skinning. Name your model and press Export. Next, head on over to builder.decentraland.org and select the Collections tab. Create a new collection with a cool name and add a new item by uploading the GLB file you just exported. Choose the best category for it, in this case feet, and your chosen rarity. Now you can see an avatar wearing the boots and check for any issues. You can also give the wearable a name, description, tags, and set it to override other items if necessary. If you want, you can change the thumbnail by clicking on the camera icon on the thumbnail and uploading a picture. Your image should be in PNG format with a transparent background and a recommended size of 512 by 512 pixels. Most thumbnails just include the wearable without skin, hair, or any other extras. You can also check the item out in World by going back to the collections page and selecting your new collection. Click on the three dots at the top of the screen and choose See in World. This will open a new browser tab and you'll need to change your digital wallet from the Ethereum network to the Robston test network in order to access it. If you're using MetaMask, open the extension and at the top where it says Ethereum network, click to expand and select the Robston test network. Give the world a moment to load and then head into your backpack and try on your new item. It's handy to run around and check the different emotes are working well. When your item is ready to be submitted to the DCL platform, go back into the wearable editor and press submit. You'll need Polygon Mana to pay the submission fees, and you can convert Mana to Polygon Mana at account.decentraland.org. The conversion process takes about 30 minutes. Don't worry, go make yourself a cup of coffee or something. And as soon as you have enough Polygon Mana in your account, you can submit the wearables. At the time of making this video, each item costs 100 Polygon Mana to submit. If and when the cost changes, I'll try and remember to pin it in the comments below. Next, the Decentraland Curators Committee will review your item, a process that usually takes about 10 days, just to make sure it works and is in compliance with the DCL content policy and terms of service. Whilst your collection is under review, you can see a grey button next to it in the wearable editor. If your item requires any modifications, a member of the committee will let you know via the Decentraland forum. You can check your collection's forum post by clicking on the three dots and going to forum post. Or you can go straight to forum.decentraland.org where you'll find your submission and many other topics. In the unlikely event your collection is rejected, the button will turn red and a reason will be given on the Decentraland forum. When an item's been approved, the button will turn green and the minting options will be available. So you can mint, wear, sell and gift your items. Wahey! Once the items are approved and synced, they can be seen on the Decentraland marketplace at market.decentraland.org. Once they've been minted, they'll show up on other marketplaces that support Polygon NFTs like OpenSea. Okay folks, that's a wrap. I hope this video helps you create your own shoes for Decentraland. I'd love to see what you make, so tag me or Low Poly Models on Twitter with your creations. If you have any questions, just let me know and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching and gone. See you next time.